As temperatures rise and the drought gets worse, scientists in our own backyard are dreaming up ways to make farming and agriculture more efficient and better for the environment. And they're making their dreams come true to combat climate change with genetics. Mantu has the story. This is Frodo. Frodo looks like your average cow, but his biological makeup is different. We've inactivated a gene that contributes to fertility. Researchers at UC Davis have a hypothesis that the particular gene they've knocked out will make Frodo sterile. If correct, that identification will help them in long-term efforts to breed cattle with the best genetics. This has been Professor Allison Van Inneman's work for more than 20 years. Genetics is a huge component of sustainability. So if we can have disease resistance, um, adaptable animals that are able to withstand heat, um, then we could actually um, produce um, more product with less animals. And that's really what breeders have been striving towards for well, ever since animal breeding began. Frodo's genes were manipulated using the CRISPR method, a breakthrough technology that won the Nobel Prize in 2020. We use what's called a targeted nuclease to make a double-stranded break in the DNA double helix. I can tell the, the nuclease or the scissors to go cut at a particular location and I can tell it, okay, go to this gene and make a cut there. And when it repairs, it'll often inactivate that gene. And so it enables us to precisely inactivate genes so we can test gene function, which from a biological perspective, it's just like being let loose in a candy store. Other UC Davis projects using the CRISPR method include gene editing, dairy cows so they don't grow horns. A majority of cattle are dehorned to prevent injuries between animals and handlers. We've been collaborating on a project where we're trying to use genome editing to remove the horns from um, dairy cattle breeds so that we don't have to physically remove them. Dehorning cattle is a concerning practice when it comes to animal rights and welfare. Then Eneman says crossbreeding alone could eliminate the horns, but the resulting calf. It's not really a dairy animal, it's not really a beef animal, um, and it won't have the ideal characteristics for either industry. She says it would take decades to breed the cows to dairy production standards, while those standards continue to climb. You'll never catch up that what's called genetic lag. Ben Eneman hopes targeted gene editing can produce cows without horns and without the time commitments needed in conventional crossbreeding. Would it be fair to say it's like a shortcut? I think it would be fair to say it's rather than relying on random mutation, you're directing it. So it's it's more targeted, I think is how I would put it. Though gene mutations are a natural occurrence, under current federal regulations, targeted gene editing has fallen under genetic engineering or genetically modified foods and are treated as animal drugs. Van Eneman says burdensome regulations and long-standing public skepticism around GMOs have prevented gene editing science from advancing. According to Pew Research, 48% of Americans say genetically modified foods are unsafe to eat, while a much smaller median of 13% say GM foods are safe. This is at odds with a clear scientific consensus that genetically modified foods are safe. Only one gene-edited food product has gone to market in the United States. That's the Aqua Advantage salmon. And just this year, the FDA cleared slick coat cattle for use in the United States. They are beef cattle that have been gene edited to have short hair, a trait that allows them to withstand high heat as the climate continues to warm. The FDA determined the edits were equivalent to natural mutations. We're in the biotech era, and it's literally influencing and revolutionizing agriculture, medicine, everyday life, creation of, of, of everyday products and synthetic biology. So it's revolutionary. John Entine, founder of the Genetic Literacy Project, says bioscience needs public buy-in to be successful, which is why addressing public concerns is important. So there are challenges ahead, and we have to be respectful. Many of the critiques of GMOs involve monopolization of technology, unintended consequences, ethics, and safety. But signaling a possible pathway to more acceptance, in September, President Biden issued an executive order to push more government dollars to the U.S. biotechnology industry, drawing parallels to John F. Kennedy's 1961 race to land a man on the moon before the end of the decade. Unwilling to postpone. President Kennedy, unwilling to postpone. President Kennedy set a goal to win the space race against Russia and advance science and technology 
for all of humanity. In time, and Van Eneman says Biden's executive order cracks open the door for more innovation, but they are cautiously optimistic. I've also had 20 years of watching how slowly the wheels turn in DC sometimes, but uh, any effort by the president or um, Washington to try to improve the, the process is, is welcome. But we can't let the regulatory situation become mired in a debate over just differences of opinion that are not science-based ultimately.